Hey guys, Buddy from Bali here. And I want to talk to you today about gambling addiction and stock trading and how they're related and how it happens to people and how we can try and fight it. <laughs> and you do need to be fighting it. So, before we get to that, let's talk about how the brain learns. See, our brain, because if we figure out, if we discuss why the brain learns, how the brain learns, excuse me, <laughs> threw off my train of thought by putting my hand in front of the camera. Uh, so, let's go back thousands of years ago. We're hunter gatherers, and every day we got to get food. So, what is our brain doing? Well, it's pattern seeking. It's seeking out patterns, and it's trying to learn from those patterns because every day around us we're seeing similar plants, similar animals, similar situations, and we're constantly in survival mode. And we have to figure out which water we can drink, which berries we can eat, stuff like that. So you'll you'll see a berry, it's a red berry, you eat it, it tastes good, you don't throw up, you live. So your brain creates a chemical that makes you remember, ah, red berry good, red berry healthy. Then you go out and you get a purple berry and then you feel sick afterwards and your brain releases a chemical so that you remember, hey, don't eat the purple berry, purple berry bad, right? Because you eat too many purple berries, you're gonna throw up all the time, you're gonna have any nutrients and you're gonna die, okay? That's what's happening. This works really well in the real world, okay? Because the patterns repeat and they're authentic. They're, they repeat, they're authentic, okay? Blueberry good, red berry good, purple berry bad, right? Same thing goes on with all the animals that you see. This bird okay, this bird attack you. This monkey okay, this monkey attack you. This cat okay, this cat attack you, <laughs> you know? This cat attack you when you do this. This cat leave you alone when you do this. Cat run away when you do this, right? Your brain is just constantly, constantly seeking out all of these different patterns and it's trying to learn and remember them and it's constantly giving you uh, incentive and feedback for when you do chase those patterns. So why do we, how does this tie in the gambling? Well, first you have to understand that before you learn something, your brain is sending a chemical to make you curious. And as that curiosity is there and you figure it out, the brain releases a reward chemical and it makes you feel happy and it makes you feel accomplished. That's a very important part of this puzzle, all right? The brain is creating the curiosity for you to go and discover a pattern. It, it's sort of like, it, you know, it's like, like you see a new plant and then your brain goes, oh, it sends you a little bit of a chemical. It says, hey, focus on that plant. Remember, only 10% of our brain is conscious. It is, is consciously what you're thinking. The other 90% of your brain power is subconscious and they're constantly feeding information back and forth to each other to increase our survival rate, okay? And so it's, it says, hey, there's a new, I don't recognize that plant. And so it sends you a chemical, and if you go and investigate it and you discover something good, it's gonna give you a happy, accomplished chemical. And your conscious brain loves it. Your conscious brain just, uh, your conscious, your conscious brain just absolutely loves that chemical. And when it discovers a plant, and it's not very useful, then it, it just, it just kill, it lowers the curiosity, because you didn't see any value for that plant. It doesn't really care it doesn't want a strong emotion tied to that plant. It doesn't need a strong memory or, excuse me, <laughs> anything tied to that plant because it's just not that useful for your survival. But when you find a good berry, you find a good banana, wow, big, big burst of, of energy, big burst of accomplishment because you found something that's really going to improve your survival rate. So how does this tie to gambling? Let's think about a slot machine, okay? First of all, it has lots of colors, it has lots of things to pique your interest, it's got all these different sounds, it's got all these feedback mechanisms that is keeping your curiosity high, and then your brain, whether you realize it or not, it's trying to solve a pattern. It's trying to solve a pattern, and here's the key with a slot machine. There is none, there is none, okay? It, every spin of the wheel is random. Every spin of the wheel, if it says you have a one in seven million chance, every spin of the wheel is like one in seven million, okay? there's not a really discernible pattern that you're gonna find, okay? You lose five times in a row, you lose six times in a row, next one you're gonna win, how much are you gonna win? Your brain is trying to figure that out because number one, it's, got a, it's piqued its curiosity. It's very entertaining and it's every time, every time you spin the wheel, whether you know it or not, your brain is making a prediction. It's predicting what's gonna happen and it's getting excited about a real life reward, a survival reward, which is more money, okay? We love money, okay? And so 
you're being curious, you're trying to discover a pattern, and every time the pattern comes out with a win, your brain releases chemical that make you happy and feel accomplished so that you try and, so that you get better at solving this pattern. And that's where the trap is. Okay, you understand? This is where the trap is, because there is no pattern to the slot machine wheel. It's just every roll is random. And the casinos know this, the statisticians know this, and they're using that to create an entertainment, okay, that keeps you gambling, it keeps you addicted, and it keeps you going. So how does this relate to the stock market? Well, think about most stock trading programs. Think about most strategies. Are they advertising, oh, make $10,000 in 10 years? No, they're saying, I made $7,000 in three days using so-and-so's blah, blah, blah. What are they doing? They're piquing your curiosity, and then they're luring you in <coughs> to the short nature prediction of the stock market, which is extremely hard to predict. I'm not going to say it's impossible, okay? But it's extremely hard, and there's very large companies with tons of employees, hundreds of employees, statisticians, mathematicians, data scientists, right, who are trying to do this. You're competing against them, and yet somehow people are going to try and tell you, oh, if you just follow this simple strategy and look at this line on this chart, in three days the stock is going to do this and you're going to make $7,000. Well, first, they didn't even tell you how much you had to invest or risk to put up the $7,000. But anyway, this is why you get addicted. You get addicted because, number one, it's short term. It, our brain is wired to finding patterns and getting a short term reward because that was wired into our survival thousands of years ago. If you found a banana that you could eat in 10 years, this is not very useful for your survival compared to a banana you can eat today. You guys follow me on this? It, it really goes back to our survival, but it also goes back even today to the chemical reactions that are going into your brain. So that instant quick reward that especially comes from day trading, five minute trading, one minute trading, in and out, 80 trades a day, this creates a lot of chemical firing, okay? A lot of piquing your interest, making a prediction, and then when you're right, it gives you a good feeling. And even, here's the thing, when you're wrong, it makes you feel frustrated. But that frustration, that, that, that I missed out chemical, I almost had it chemical, okay? That feeling, that emotion, that is also adds to the addiction because you're going through a low and then you're going high and then you're going low and then you're going high. Whereas, think about like a movie. If it's the same beat and you're just talking and you know, it gets boring, right? Movies have this up, down, up, down, climax, and then finish, right? They have a very set beat to the emotional roller coaster that they put you on that keeps you engaged, that keeps you interested. See, short-term trading is doing the same thing. You're, you're piquing your interest, you're discovering something about the stock, you're seeing the volume of trades, and then you're making a prediction, and then when it goes wrong, oh, you get that, uh, you get that, oh, you get that sinking feeling, and then you go and you get, you pique your interest and you find another one, and then, ah, you get a win, and then you get a lose, and then, oh, and then you get a win, yeah. So you're going on this emotional roller coaster, which means it doesn't get boring. It doesn't get boring because it's up and down. If any video game is just flat, constant, constant, action, action, fight, 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 it gets boring. If any movie is the same thing, there's no ups and downs, it's just the same amount of action, whether it's high action or low action, you will not sustain yourself emotionally, you will get bored. You will get bored. This, this is, by the way, this is true in everything, right? If you're sailing on just flat water all the time with the same wind all the time, it would get really boring. We're just, we're somehow wired to this up-down, ch constant changing, dealing with stuff. So the frustration and the reward both act to make you addicted and keep you interested because we're just, we're just wired to survive, man. Like, you got to understand that, all right? Our chemicals are wired for survival and we're out in the wild. You don't, if everything is the same, you don't really need to be paying attention because here's the other thing. Your brain uses a ton of calories, a ton of calories. Uh, I mean, a lot. That's why if you think about, it's kind of weird. I was thinking about this the other day. It's kind of weird. We're the only animal on the planet that we know of that really talks, that really learns, that really passes down memories and what they learn to their kids. Why are we the only smartest animal? Like, I get, it's just weird that out of thousands or millions of animals, 
nothing is really competing with us, right? Nothing, nothing. Like there's not even a, one more, there's not even one more. That's just, it's really weird to me that we have all these animals and the closest ones we've got to compete with us are chimpanzees, dolphins, and maybe a few birds. And, and everything else is just like a huge notch below us in terms of intelligence. And even, even the difference between us and dolphins and other things is a huge difference. Dolphins are actually incredibly smart, super smart at math and other things, which I found interesting. But they don't communicate the way that we do, and they don't have the thumbs and passing down of the information that we do. I find this very fascinating that we're the only animal that's like, let's say, super smart. <laughs> okay? But why is that? Well, a big part of that is that the brain takes a ton of calories. Some of the longest living animals, like in terms of evolution, is like the alligator. The alligator has a very small brain. It's constantly conserving energy. It's constantly using a low amount of calories, drifting through the water, and just waiting. Just like a, a it's like in a trap. Predator. It's like a trap predator, right? It doesn't chase its prey. It just waits, prey comes to it, boom, it snatches it, it eats it. These animals exist through the dinosaur age. Why? Because they're constantly conserving energy. Whereas our big brains is constantly absorbing energy. So we need this constant search for nutrients and dealing with our environment and hunting and all this other stuff. So I'm sorry this turned into a long video. I was trying to make this short, but it's such a deep topic. And you have to understand how it's going to affect you, your lifestyle, and your productivity. In other words, your return on investing. The good strategies are boring. I hate to say it. I hate to say it because I feel it too. It's boring because you just keep getting these constant small wins over and over again. And I say small, but they, they add up, right? 5% a month is actually not small. 5% a month is 80% a year. And, and by the way, your brain should have went, wait a minute, what does he mean 5% a month is 80% a year? It's 5 times 12 is 60. That's with compounding, of course, right? Well, your brain is looking for that pattern. It says, hey, something's wrong. Boom, it piques your interest. What's different? Aha, we figured it out. Boom, chemical. Now, I told you, so you didn't really figure it out. You won't get the same chemical burst, but that's what's going on through your brain. It sees something that's different and then it's trying to take that thing that makes you curious. What is different about this pattern? How do I solve it? And then boom, I solved it. Here we go. So if you have a strategy that works the same every month and gets the same reward, there's not a big, there's not really a bigger reward. There's not really a big loss. There's not really a big discovery. You're going to get bored. And that's the key. Being okay with that is actually really, really powerful. Because it means you're following a system that A, hopefully works, <laughs> and B, it's repeatable. And it, it doesn't really have to change. It doesn't have to peak your interest and, and fire your synapses. Because if you're doing that, you you're actually have a system that has big volatility, and that can actually lead to more gambling addiction. So anyway, I want to wrap this up because this video is going too long. I feel like I'm just circling back on myself now. But let me know in the comments, did this, do you get it now? Like, do you, do you understand did this happened to you? Or do you understand like the way that people market trading? Because I want to say, hey, I, this messes up the whole trading industry and the whole trading marketability and people talking to each other about trades. They're just like, oh, it's just gambling. It's just gambling. It's just gambling. Yeah, because it attracts gamblers and it addicts people into a strategy that is gambling. Okay, you, you, you get where I'm going with this, why you have gambling addiction is because it, that's how people get led into it and that's what keeps them going because it's not because it's good, not because they're making tons of money, but because it keeps them excited, it keeps them interested, it's firing their synapses. Whereas a winning strategy like the wheel strategy, which I love, after a while it's going to get boring and you have to be okay with it. You have to be okay with it being boring because... The opposite of that is that it's super exciting and leads to gambling addiction. Anyway, I, I hope I really got this across. It's already been 15 minutes. It seems, I mean, to me it went super fast. It feels like five minutes. But it's such a deep and interesting topic that affects the entire ecosystem and discussion around and marketability around investing. Because if you tell somebody a trader, what's the next thing out of their question, uh, out of their mind? What is the next thing they ask you? How much did you make last year? 
That's their question. They didn't ask you, what was your risk, risk reward profile? They didn't ask you, you know, what was your downside protection? They ask you, how much did you make? Because that's what's built into our brain when it comes to investing and trading and all this stuff is just, you have this amazing strategy that makes tons of money really fast. That's what people are just, anyway, that's gambling addiction and how it relates to stock trading. Always be trying to fight it. Always be trying to be, at least now that you're aware of it, you can see the signals that, oh my gosh, this is why I keep doing this. This is why I'm working really hard and I'm trading 40, 50, 60 hours a week and I'm not making as much as this guy doing the wheel when he can do it one hour a week and live in Bali and enjoy this beautiful weather. Uh, we are in a bit of a lockdown, it's unfortunate. I would actually rather be in Europe right now and because of this nasty COVID situation, I can't really travel peacefully or easily where I want to go. I could still go if I wanted to, but everyone's got these quarantine times. It makes it boring. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to flex on you guys. I'm just trying to encourage you guys to live a life of freedom, but make sure that as you're learning this trading thing, that you're not getting sucked into these exciting methods that lead to gambling addiction, that lead to you working more for medium profits. You know? Anyway. Check out theoptionsoracle.com. They do a ton of the work for you. They do wheel trades every single month. They send you a newsletter once a month, okay? It's only $97 after the 30-day free trial. You sign up, use it for 30 days. You don't like it, cancel it. No money lost, no big deal, okay? And it's on PayPal, so you just cancel through PayPal. You don't even have to message them if you want to cancel, okay? But if you get one good trade out of there, it's going to pay for the $97 monthly newsletter, and it's a great value. I've used it for a year. That's why I keep recommending it on our channel. And then check our description below. I might have had a scan for you guys this weekend. Some trades you can put on, on for Monday. And do check out sends.org. They're working on helping us all live forever. It seems like a good charity to give to. Check it out. Bye.